Good afternoon. I'm the Reverend Edward Lee Thompson. I'm the Chair and President of Lower Nashville. All right. And Noah, uh, along with the familiar affiliates of Tennessee, uh, including Michael, Memphis, Caleb, Chattanooga, and Ed Knoxville. And we welcome you to this third Racing Power Summit held here in Nashville, Tennessee. All right. And I want to share with you just a brief reflection inspired by a passage of scripture found in Genesis, the 16th chapter and the 13th verse. And it reads, Hagar gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. She said, I have not seen the one who sees me. And those of you who might know the story, Hagar, an Egyptian slave, had been mistreated, denied justice, and dismissed to die. But God saw her plight and had mercy on her. And as a result of this experience with God, Hagar gave one of the greatest testimonial confession in the Bible. She called God Elroy, meaning the God who sees. And she then made it personal. You are the God who sees me, and I have now seen the one who sees me. And from that experience, Hagar, was able to see through the eyes of God. And when we see mercy, when we see justice, we see the character of God. Now, now how does God see grace and power? First of all, God sees all people as his created beings. Yes, sir. And the good part about it, God shows no partiality. All right. He has no favorites. Yes, sir. And he is irrespective of race. No race is superior <coughs> to another in God's eyesight. We all are unique and equal. That's how God sees us. And God sees the beautiful diversity of human beings which he created in his image and his likeness. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And God values all of humanity. Mm -hmm. And if we see through the eyes of God, we would have the same values. When you see through the eyes of God, like Hagar, mm -hmm. we would see also the power of God. And from my faith community, Absolute power belongs only to God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And God has been generous enough to make us stewards or managers of his power. Mm -hmm. In other words, it doesn't belong to us. It's on loan to us. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't own it. Yes, sir. And it's, it is intended to be used for God's glory and for the good of his people. And we will use power properly if we are like Hagar, seeing through the eyes of God. You know, there's one popular quote about power that I totally disagree with. We know it, we often quote it, and it says, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yes, sir. <coughs> but again, from my faith community, yes, sir. only God has absolute power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> and we like to say he's too holy, he's too righteous, and he's too just to be corrupt or corrupt. Mm -hmm. And when we are descriptive of the power that God loans us, it's obvious it can be used in a just or in an unjust way. 
But the good news is that godly power is always just. We humans can use God's power to do good or to do evil, to help or to abuse, to defeat racism or to maintain racism. And racism is an indelible part of America. Race of power was used against the indigenous people of America as witness in the theft of their land, racist relocation policies, and genocide. And one of the worst forms of slavery in the annals of history occurred in America, of Africans. Yes, sir. And continued through segregation and Jim Crow's laws to this very day. Yes, sir. Which are all based on racism. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Seeing through the eyes of God like Hagar saw, which we are all should try to emulate. And we see that if we had the opportunity to be like Hagar and allow God to open our eyes that we may see through his eyes. And the strange thing about when we have the eyes of God, we can identify all faces of racism. It allows us to see the hypocrisy and the racism in America's Declaration of Independence and the Constitution as both excluded and demonstrated prejudice toward American Indians, toward Africans, and women. So we see this racism. Excuse me there just a moment. I thought I would see us speaking through my preacher's voice, but, <laughs> but, but this helps also. And when we see through the eyes of God, we, we will be certain to see racism in government. We see it in the workplace. We see it in unions. We see it in the armed forces. We see it in Christian congregations. We can recognize racism, whether it is explicit or implicit, when we see through the eyes of God. We can see racism in justice groups. And seeing through the eyes of God, we see racism in health, in education, in immigration, in housing, in the so-called criminal justice system, in the White House, and in Congress. And we see racism in the rise of white nationalism and hate crimes. Seeing through the eyes of God allows us to see all forms of racist injustice. And I believe all the issues the Gamalia Network is challenging to have their root cause in racism. Yes. What we do expect from this race and power, really, what do we expect to receive from it? We want to be equipped to use God's power to fight the racism, yes. to expose it, and help eliminate it. Yes. We will leave here in power with margin orders to call it out. Wherever we see it, hear it, feel it, or smell it, we have to call it out. Yes. And even those who claim they don't have a racist bone in their body, but their actions show otherwise, we must challenge the racist words, character, and acts. Hagar, Hagar, an Egyptian slave, was allowed to see through the eyes of God. So let us leave this race and power solid, seeing through the eyes of a just and righteous God.